you're a software developer, at some point your code is gonna be a victim of a race condition. It's gonna cause your application to behave in ways that is gonna make you say, what the f I don't know what's happening. Holy sh what? How is the code even getting there? Race conditions are exceptionally tricky to find if you're not prepared for them. So in this video, we're gonna discuss what race conditions are, why they do the evil things they do to your application and what you can do to safeguard against them. So let's get started. So a race condition in a C-sharp application is when multiple threads are trying to access the same shared data at the same time. Because we can't predict the order in which the threads execute, this can end up with some really unexpected behavior in your application. To illustrate this, I'm gonna show you guys the classic example where two transactions are being performed on the same bank balance simultaneously. So in our normal situation, we have a bank balance of a thousand and if we wanted to make a hundred dollar deposit, here T1 would read the value of the bank balance it would add a hundred dollars, we would have an outcome of uh, $1,100, and we would perform a write back to the balance, bank balance, overriding the original bank balance. Completely fine, it works exactly as you would expect. Now we have a situation where we have two transactions, one wanting to make a deposit of $100, the other wanting to make a deposit of $200. So here T1 will read the balance of $1,000, at the same time, T2 will read a bank, the balance of a thousand. T1 adds a hundred dollars to its total and writes that back to the bank balance. But simultaneously, T2 adds two hundred dollars to its local balance and writes that back to the balance, making the, the overall balance $1,200. This is clearly wrong because after making the deposit of 100 and 200, we should be having a value of $1,300. This is a typical scenario where we have a race condition where we can't predict the order in which or uh, the order in which the threads are being executed. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's see that really how that is in code and what you can do to prevent that from happening in the real world. So we have a very simple class. Uh, called counter over here. This stores an integer value. It has a method called increment, which just waits for 50 milliseconds, adds one to the count, and writes the count out to the screen. And then in our main program, we declare an new instance of the counter. We loop through the counter and we call the increment um, five times. This is squiggly line is just because uh, we're not awaiting this. We can just get rid of that by um, ignoring the outcome. So if we run this, uh, ideally you'd expect this to go um, for each time, it would increment the counter once every 50 milliseconds and count one, two, three, four, five. Let's run this. So here you can see the, the race condition actually occurring. So the first two threads incremented the count, the value of count at the same time and pushed it to one. Then going forward, had a more expected outcome of the order in which the threads were executed. If I run this again, there we were lucky enough that it executed in order, but if I continue to run this, you'll see that the order in which these, the increment happens will be completely unpredictable. Each time we do it, it'll be in a different order. So there's our race condition, very simple example. So how do we safeguard against this? Luckily C Sharp gives us the lock statement, which ensures that only one thread is allowed to execute a block of code at the same time. So let's see how it works. So we first declare a reference type, which in our case we're going to make it. We're going to call it locker, it's a new object. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our critical section of the code and this is our critical section of the code because this is the um, part of the code that is is this is our shared resource that is being accessed by multiple threads at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in our lock statement. Um, oops, uh, locker. And then we're going to put our critical section of the code inside the lock. And how this works is when a thread enters this method, when it gets to the statement, it tries to acquire the lock. So if the lock is not in use, it acquires it. And during that time, no other thread is allowed to enter this piece of code 
while the lock is being used in use by another thread. So let's uh, call it T1. For the first thread ent enters in here. The lock is not being used. T1 will grab the lock. Um, any other threads trying to come in won't be able to access it until T1 is finished. Once T1 finishes, gets to the end of this block, it releases the lock. Then the next thread that has been waiting to T2, for example, will be waiting here. It will then check again to say that now the lock is available. It acquires the lock, performs the code. Any other threads entering this method will have to wait and so on and so forth. This is a safer way to ensure that threads are executed and in a more reliable order. This is where the term thread safe comes from. So if you see in the, frequently in the Microsoft documentation, you'll see that a class is thread safe. It means that it has been coded with locks as to make sure that there's no um, unexpected behavior in your application. So let's run this now and, and you'll see every time we run this, we consistently have the same order of our threads executing the way we expected to. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like this, you may consider subscribing or maybe try one of my other videos. But regardless, I hope to see you in the next video.